Welcome to Pearl's Whimsical Wreaths. I'm Pearl Higgins and today I'm going to show you how to make a rag wreath and we are using um, uh, some pretty uh, Halloween material and um, I have three different patterns here that we're going to use and then I want to show you how to fold this and cut it and then we will get started. So, be sure to like and share, and um, I would appreciate it. So these are, um, I got these at Walmart, they're fat quarters, and um, uh, maybe I got them, maybe I didn't get them at Walmart, they say $1.47 seasonal fat quarters. The, they're actually 18 by 21 inches, so that you could see. And um, so you only need four when you're making a wreath with a 10 inch, um, a rag wreath with a 10 inch wreath frame, which is what we're using. So um, I'm going to cut the tag off of this. And let's see, I've got to turn the volume down on here because I hear all these beeps going on. So, um, so when you un when you undo this when you um, open this up it's 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 all it's this it's folded um, this way we want to use nine inch strips so I'm going to turn it and fold it this way okay and now I iron my pieces because they just lay better when I'm cutting them but. So you want a nine inch piece. These are just a little, little short of nine inches, but you know, it's the easiest way to do this. So you fold them the other way. Then I um, iron them, like I say, just so that they, it takes two seconds to, to iron them down. And then I also will cut the frayed edge off of here that you see. So I'm gonna zoom in on, um, this so that you can see more of what I'm doing and um, instead of looking at me but anyway I cut the fray edge off of here uh, let's see we can zoom in a little more and let me tilt this down just a little bit okay all right so again I just cut this fray edge off so I've done that with all of my pieces and now this piece is ironed um, and uh, all nicely I think it's ironed it feels like it's got a wrinkle in it um, they might not be exact but you you you're um, you know they don't have to be exact to do this rag wreath so the next thing I do is I cut my um, edge so that there's two pieces here. Okay, and this just wants to. Like that, okay? So then we're gonna cut one inch strips. And that's where these nice little things come in. And I'm going to use my pearly weights. Um, I created these and um, they are on my Etsy shop. And um, and I'll show you, they're, they're, they were designed for um, holding mesh down because mesh wants to roll back on you. So this, you can hold it while you cut it or you can put it at the end where the roll is and it keeps it from this rolling back on you and it's see-through so that you can see your lines on your mat because most of us are using a mat okay so I'm going to actually I'm going to fold this in half just so it doesn't take as long to cut these pieces again we're cutting nine inch piece or um, one inch pieces so I line this up on my mat and I'm measuring out a one inch piece and like I said this works great 
for a straight edge as well. Um, so we're cutting one inch strips, nine inches by one inch. Now there's several ways to make a rag wreath. This is the way I like to do it. I made one of those that you just tie them, you keep tying on the, um, um, actually this is what it's gonna look like to, so that you have an idea. This is one I did um, and it's just using the first, the first is using the two rows and then the two rows on the end. So it's using these two and these two. Okay, and um, we start on the outer edge first and then we do the inner edge. But this is, um, and this measures once it's done, 14 inches diameter. So this was one that I did. This is kind of like a, it's an Easter bunny fabric I used, but you can't hardly see the little Easter bunny. But anyway, so this is the kind of rag wreath I like to do. I have done the other one. It takes, it's way, um, if, if you want to see what it looks like, I'll, I'll go get one. It's a little more time consuming, and I just don't think it looks as neat. Here's the other style rag wreath. Um, but it's very time consuming. So this is where you just keep tying, if you look at the back, you just keep tying pieces in you, in, into all three, all three of the rings. So you're using, um, this one has uh, three rings, but you're tying on here, and then you're tying here, and then you're tying here. And it's just too time consuming. And I don't know, this it's pretty, but I think that the patterns that you pick for your rag wreath look better um, when they're like this. But that's up to you. So um, those are the two rag wreaths that um, I have made. So let's get back to cutting our one inch strips. And I just get a little uh, Dollar Tree uh, basket, and because this is great to do when you're watching TV. And in fact, um, I have clinic day today with my husband. He has um, has to go in every three weeks for treatment, and um, so this will be a nice little project for me to sit and do for up to five hours. It can take. Um, so. finish cutting and again again like I said don't don't it doesn't have to be perfect if you have a strip that's less than an inch it's not it's not a problem um, um, and a good sharp rotary cutter and this is my most favorite rotary cutter because you grip this and the blade comes out. When you let go of it, the blade, the blade is gone. You know, it's been, instead of, um, somewhere I have another kind that you actually have to, you know, turn the button to pull it in. So, um, finish with this and Again, my pearly weights you can get on my Etsy shop, and that is http colon slash slash www.pearlswhimsicalwreaths.com. I'm going to open this up because remember we folded this, and um, and my polka dot because I'm using four patterns. Is it four patterns? Um, no, three patterns. Um, one of these I have to use uh, twice. So, so now this piece is, I'm going to trim off that little excess because it is quite a bit more. I don't want it to be too much larger than the one. That, so, well, 
I'll actually save that because maybe we use it to tie off some something. So I'll put this over. I got a little pile there of stuff that wasn't uh, exact. So again, these come in a 10 inch and a 21 inch. You can buy two 10 inch uh, or you can buy one 10 inch and one 21 inch depending on you know what you're using it for. It's also great, here's the 21 inch. It's also great for holding for wrapping paper. Keeps your wrapping paper from um, rolling back on you. So lots of uses. It's a straight edge, you know, holds your mesh. It's got enough weight that it holds your mesh down. Okay, so now we're gonna get started with the wreath. So um, um, my thought process was, and, and because um, the pattern um, the pattern is, I like to use two, two, two. So I use two of each one as I'm going around, okay? Because otherwise the pattern doesn't show up as nice. So we have um, our polka dot. The black polka dot is what I have two, um, an extra of. And then we have our stripe. So I think what I'm going to do, and we start out with the um, outside edge, and I have to remember, um, I get, I get, uh, I have trouble <laughs> remembering, I should have done this before, um, and drawing a blank. So you make a little loop. And I'm, I might be going the wrong direction. That's the that's the, what I'm trying to remember. If I'm going the wrong direction, because you want this on the outside. So when I do this, and I pull this through, yeah. So I'm going the wrong way. Okay. So your loop should be out like this. So your loop is out here gonna put your finger in your loop let's see if we can get this so you can see it okay so your loop is on the outside we're gonna put our finger in there and we're gonna pull the ends through here and we can cut all the fray off at the end okay because you want these pieces and you're gonna pull it now don't worry about you know if the back side of your material is showing so that's where you want your your um, tails is on the outside okay so again we're going to fold it and I'm kind of doing this backwards because this I would typically turn it around the other way and you pull it tight okay and I am using a 10 inch wreath frame and again these don't have to be perfect so if you've got an end that's a little longer don't worry about it okay so then the next one we're going to alternate um, we're going to do a stripe again we're going to push this down you're using the two outside edges And it doesn't matter which side you pull it on. It's just this is backwards for me. But I want you to see how how you do it. Okay. So there's the stripe. It does go kind of fast once you get going. Um, you'll get in a rhythm like. And it's about, uh, I'm trying to think how many we do per block. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Looks like that there's twelve of these in one um, of the sections of your wreath frame. So now we're going to do our black polka dot.
So this is how I would do it. I would be working on this side of my frame. normally not this difficult. <laughs> um, just not sure why that keeps wanting to fold that way. Hmm. This material seems a little bit more um, fraying than uh, And the others I've used. Now remember, these are going to scrunch up, you know, so we've got two, four, six. So we're going to start over with our um, orange. We got two of those. We got this one. We got this one. We got two of those. Also, you'll see that the inner layer will lay over the outer layer, okay? playing a CD in the background. I don't own rights to that. It's just a CD I'm playing. So I don't want anybody to get. Okay. Then we're going to do our stripe again. But the other one, um, like I say, it's a little more time-consuming because you're tying on all three brackets, and this one is just using two. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten. We're going to do two more. We might can get more in there um, so that it's scrunched a little bit so it's tighter. But um, like I said, this works good for uh, sitting watching TV, if you're in a doctor's office. So I think we can get two more. I know this showed, well, okay, I'm sorry. It's 10 on the short side of this. This one actually has, let's see if we can find, okay, so the, I'm sorry, it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Um, nope, still in the wrong place. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, so we need 20 in here, so we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So I'll finish a section 
and then um, I will uh, go off camera, finish it, or almost finish it, and then I'll come back on and we'll finish up this wreath. I don't want you to sit here and watch me do the whole thing. It, So, okay, we got two, four, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 16, 18, 20. There we go. So there's our 20. And you can pre-count them out. It's, it's up to you. But this will be cute for Halloween or fall. More of a Halloween theme. And we're pretty close to Halloween, but... I've been wanting to do this, but life just got in the way. So, um, I thought I'd do it this morning while I'm waiting for my husband to get ready. And I hear a little fur baby that we have. Zoe. Hey, Dum Dum. That's my Zoe. Okay. So I just go back and tighten them up a little bit. It's looking pretty. So now we do a black. And then when you get to the second section, you just continue your rotation, your, your uh, scheme, color scheme pattern. You don't want to see your frame. That's why I like to make it full. You just want to get up here. My baby, you just want to get up here because you want to be nosy. She's a very nosy dog. She's got to check everything out. I know. I know. <laughs> Look at your eyes. I know. But you can't. You can't get up here with mommy. Because you just get in the way. You get into trouble. So again, um, I'm using four fat quarters that I have put in half, folded in half with the nine inch side. And I'm cut, I cut one inch strips and you need about for a 10 inch frame this ends up being 14 inches um, with a 10 inch frame. It's like 170 of these, I believe. Last one for this section. So there's 20 for the large side section and 10 in here. Is that add up right? So, so there we are. So far. Oops, got it down far enough. And that's what the back side looks like. All right, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna finish. We'll go ahead and do a couple here. So we're on the orange. So we're gonna do stripe. We got one, two, three, I 
from here over there. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, so that's for our next section. And I didn't want the polka dots together, so that's why I kind of separated the polka dots with the stripe. So when you get to here, you can either follow the same pattern or you can start your own a different pattern. You can maybe do the black polka dot so that the black polka dot falls over the top of this one and then start your, your design. Whoops, we've got the wrong one here. We've got stripes we're supposed to do. Sorry. And the nice thing about these two is they will fit between a front door and a storm door. So if you're in the north, like me, and um, I think I just did this backwards, and um, you have a storm door, a lot of times some of the wreaths that we make are too thick um, to fit between and so that your storm door closes properly. So these fit perfect between a um, storm door and uh, front door. They're very flat. Um, okay. All right, so next we're going to do. So here, why don't we just do a couple of these on the second ring while we're, just so that you can see how this is going to lay. So I'm going to start with the black polka dots. And you can do this in, in sections like that. So you see how that's going to lay over. You can do them, you know, So the black then is followed by the orange. So we'll finish this section. Then you can see what both sections look like. And you can adjust these a little in the end, you know, when it's all done. You know, if something's not laying right, you can take it out. And There's a polka dot. We'll do the stripes. So we'll do this last one here. I think I need to be getting going here. And we will finish this. I will finish it, except for a small section. And we will finish it off with a bow. You don't have to, but you can. Okay. I just think these look so much prettier this way. And um, the bow just adds to it. This would make a nice little bridle. And 
again I left frayed edges on there it doesn't matter looks very pretty okay we will finish this in a bit okay we're back let's turn this on just so you can see me okay we are back and um we are going to finish off the wreath. So here's here's it finished. Um, and we're going to add a bow. That's all we're going to do to it. Is just add a bow. Um, so what you think? Okay. So let's make a bow for it. We'll set that aside. I'm going to use a the Pro Bow. So let me turn this down just a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. Adjust this. Okay. Okie doke. So I'm going to add a little color to it. So, <coughs> excuse me, I started with um, these two colors this purple. I wanted to add a little purple to this. So, let's see here. Let's go a little closer. A little bit of coffee. Okay. Alright. I keep pushing it back. It should be here. Okay, so now we're going to use uh, solid color orange. And I've already dovetailed this, so we're going to put this, separate my, I'm going to pinch here, I'm going to wrap around finger number two left, or three left, and then wrap around this finger, and then twist. this one off. Okay. Do our little dovetail. And set it there. And I'm not too concerned about the lengths of the tails yet because we'll adjust those when um, we get ready to uh, fluff it. So just getting this out of the way. Uh, my pin cushion here. Get that out of the way. So then we're gonna do we're gonna use this color next. This is a one and a half as well. So we're gonna use this one. Get our little dovetail. Pinch, twist, remembering that this is always the front of your bow. That little tail wants to get in the way here. Another pinch, twist, and then we'll tie it off here. dovetail and again like I said I'm just cutting the tails off it doesn't really matter where so then we're going to go to two and a half inch two two and a half inch on the ends um, I got this ribbon at deco exchange it's a pretty big roll love it so so then we're going to do this orange polka dot. We'll do an orange polka dot. And then the last one will be like a sheer. Twist. 
just and you're holding your finger right there where the ribbon and I'm doing this on row C I kind of like my row C um, I think it's the perfect size for a lot of projects I don't also just so you know I don't like using rubber bands it kind of messes your ribbon up when you use a rubber band to keep this in place I just buy these little um, short, uh, let me see if I can get that so that you can see. I want to say they're three quarter inch. Um, I get them on Amazon if anybody's interested, let me know. But they're perfect for, they're not too long, and they're perfect for putting into your ribbon. Um, and then this is our last ribbon. We're going to use the sheer. Um, polka dot. Kind of like what the first one we started with, except this one's a sheer. And this is a two and a half. And it's got glitter. All right. And we'll probably do, I might do a little tail in one of the other colors here. Maybe the... Do a little pinch and then we'll tie it off. Okay. There's our bow, and then we're going to fluff it. And if I fluff it, I don't know if I want the tail. So let's let's just keep let's continue on with what we have here, and let's see how it looks. So then we're going to take this piece off the top. Now I'm using 24 gauge wire because I found 26 seems to break easy. So I'm pulling as tight as I can and then I'm going to take and twist these other two with them. Okay? And then pull them together. So I'm going to take them off. Get our probo out of the way. box right down here. We're going to feed our ribbon our um, wires through here. Kind of keep some and we'll do two this way and two this way. Okay. So now we're going to fluff. We're going to pull a tail and a loop the opposite direction. We'll go to this side because the tail's on this side. We're going to pull the loop and the tail on this side. Okay. So then we go to our next one and the tail was on this side so we're going to do the loop on this side first and then again on to this side we're going to go with the tail and then the loop on this side. So this way you've got a loop and a tail of the same color ribbon on um, the opposite sides. So our next ribbon we have a loop so we're going to do a tail first and then same here loop and a tail and we'll smooth these out and um, 
our next one, a loop and a tail, and then a tail over here. And then this one I just kind of make sure that it goes the opposite way. So, time to start trimming some of these. They're just a little too long. This one might be just a little bit too long. Okay. This one's a little bit. But I want it a little longer than this one. This one's a little too long. loop and we can always add so these two should be about the same this might be a little bit too longer a little too long okay so there's our bow now let's put it on our wreath and I might pull these down so that they're more in the front, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I don't want that tipping over on my foot. So what I mean by that is I might pull these two down. The same with this one. This one still might be a little too long, but let's put it on here. So here's our wreath. We're going to separate the two, so we have two on each side. And I don't know if I've got a good side here or a bad side. It might be up here. So I'm going to feed this wire down in under here. And then we'll take it to the back. And we'll twist it off. I'm going to turn my glue gun on because I like to soften those edges so that they don't scrape any doors. I will need to kind of cut some of this off. Okay, so now I'm just going to fluff, but again, I think I want a, these little tails to come down and where's my other there it is so I'm just trying to fill it in Want to fold these down, curl them down. So there is our wreath, and I would probably do this kind of like. Not so much at the top, maybe on an angle, than I would, um, you know, do it kind of like an angle. Where the bow is on the side, more on the side than on the top. So I would probably put my hanger in here. So there's our rag wreath with a bow. And if you want, you can trim some of these off. You know, they, some of this material, some seems to ravel more than others. But I think, too, because it's a rag wreath, it makes, um, 
it, it gives a character. I just think that uh, it gives a character. So we've got some of the black in there, purple, and there's our wreath. Okay. So I want to thank you for um, watching and um, turn this up so it's not cutting my head off. <laughs> um, and uh, there we go. So for now, this is the rag wreath, and I will. Be, I'm, I'm going to be doing more um, YouTube videos on how to's and I think my next one's going to be a um, mason jar rim uh, uh, well I guess you could call it a wreath but it's going to sit more on the table than it is um, hanging up and it'll be with the buffalo black and white buffalo plaid and red and white buffalo plaid check Okay, till next time, thank you for watching. Again, this is Pearl Higgins with Pearl's Whimsical Wreaths. See you next time.